ladies and gentlemen, the evolution is here. If you want to talk about the D-backs evolution, we have to go back to the beginning. George Fabregas, the catcher, Mike Lansing, the pitcher, play ball. No, further back than that. Major League Baseball is coming to Arizona. No, we're talking about all the way back. This isn't about fashion trends or tradition. This is evolutionary science. Well, it's a matter of life and death. So animals are out struggling for survival. You know, in the end, if a predator sees you, you're, you're dead. Palm Beach, Florida, March 9th, 1995. Major League Baseball awards an expansion franchise to Jerry Colangelo and his partners. Arizona, at the time home to just eight teams in the Cactus League, now has a big league ball club to call its own. Here it is. Here's the Arizona. Though it'll almost immediately be known as teal, the official team color is Arizona turquoise, a greenish-blue stone indigenous to the Grand Canyon State. Copper because of its economic importance and history here, and purple largely because, well, purple already had a pretty good following in Arizona. We're kind of a purple family. Bob Brownlee wasn't the first Diamondback to wear number 15. It wasn't even Brent Brady. That distinction belongs to two-time All-Star Danny Manning. Arizona will have to wait another four years to see somebody six foot ten in a D-backs uniform. From the beginning, the Diamondbacks have a diverse set of uniforms that raise the ire of traditionalists. Just a month into their existence, Bill King, national writer for the Sports Business Journal, said that the team had rewritten the book on uniform combinations. There were four home jerseys, three jerseys worn on the road, four different caps, one of which was affectionately referred to by the players as their ice cream man look, and lasted only that one year. Maybe ice cream's a good metaphor, because the fans ate it up. On opening night, the team sold $750,000 in apparel. In subsequent years, the team streamlined its look. The inaugural snakehead patch was modified and found an extended home on the sleeve and on the batting practice caps. Some looks were retired, but more than anything, the purple and teal became synonymous with good baseball. From 1999 to 2002, only one National League team won more games than the sometimes black, sometimes pinstriped, sometimes purple Arizona Diamondbacks. It's a game! In fall 2001, the bright lights of the World Series pitted baseball's nonconformists against the game's most iconic uniform. The New York Post's Tom Keegan repeatedly referred to the Diamondbacks' ugly purple logo or ugly purple pinstripes. What can you say? Seven games later, ugly purple looked awfully pretty on the world champs and on the 300,000 strong that greeted them in the victory parade. In the wild, a diamondback rattlesnake sheds its skin two to three times a year. After nine years, Arizona's baseball team was ready to do the same. It was a difficult time and I, and I had just gotten here when the decision was being made to change the colors. Uh, but the reasons behind it were, were certainly understandable. You know, there was no red in our division. The Rockies were already purple. We had complaints from Major League Baseball and others saying it's very difficult to match the, the purple and it looks blue on TV. There were so many different reasons for, for at least looking into it. And it, it was a very, uh, very huge and large task uh, and a big transition for us. Uh, you know, we're really excited about the change. He's showing off the number one white home uniform with new script lettering featuring the new D-backs brand in Sonora Red with black and Sonora and sand trim. The new colors made for improved retail, but the choices may have also been providing a biological advantage. I've had a long-standing research interest in how and why animals are colorful. Diamondback would be silly to be colorful in nature. These are sit-and-wait predators that have to sneak up on their prey, and they don't want to give their, you know, blow their cover, so to speak. And yet, you know, in professional baseball, you know, all of our mascots, all of our colors have, have to be bold and bright and stand out. And so, you know, the D-backs have spun the, the local, you know, attractive organism into bright red. Back. And they're standing on a green background, right? And so gr gray stands out remarkable against green. This is why you don't see a lot of greens. The Packers, the Jets, and a few others notwithstanding. You know, especially, you know, bright reds contrast remarkably well with green. 
And in fact, there's data that show that teams that wear red can have a, a competitive advantage over other teams because of the fear that red seems to evolutionarily instill in opponents. And this is everything from critters like birds, reptiles, and even in humans. There's some studies at the Olympics that show that some of the individuals and teams wearing red have a competitive advantage. Science aside, the team still had to win over a fan base reluctant to change, and they did. Ball game! Bob Melvin's young team had the best record in the National League. There will be postseason baseball in the great state of Arizona in the year 2007. To the 2007 Western Division champion, Arizona Diamondbacks. After nine years in purple and teal, a new era had begun. But maybe more importantly, the die had been cast and the D-backs evolution was underway. The current D-backs evolution found its footing after the 2013 season. I actually remember coming out of the industry meetings in Orlando back in 2013 and they were talking about some fundamental changes to the uniforms that were going to be happening soon. And so we kind of had the aha moment of, well, if they're changing how the uniform's built for everybody, this is probably a good time to get out in front of how our look is conveyed. And we both decided that, that we wanted to be the first in Major League Baseball to take that next step and change the look of uniforms and make them more modern, more fashion forward. So we talked about how do we really innovate our uniform? What's the next step? What's the next feature that we want to, we want to incorporate? And so color was one of the first things that we started talking about. And back in 2011, when Major League Baseball designed our all-star uniform, we really liked how that pop of blue worked. It was small, it was subtle, but it really stood out. So we looked at really a version with a modern word mark that just had a blue trim, kind of a reflective treatment on the word mark. Didn't really work when we saw the sample. It was a little too, you know, there's a lot of blue in the division, so we didn't necessarily want to stick with that theme. While toying with the uniform has become commonplace in other sports, thanks in large part to what's unofficially known as the Oregon effect, baseball has been resistant to change. But the commissioner's office found an eager dance partner in Arizona. And I actually made a call to the head of MLB licensing at the time, and. He saw me call and answer the phone and asked, why are you calling me? He's like, are you calling me to ask the same question that I'm about to ask you? I said, well, it all depends on what you're about to ask me. I'm here to talk about uniforms. He said, I was hoping you were going to say that. I asked the commissioner if, if uh, he was aware of what we were doing. He said he had been told. Asked him if he was okay with our direction that we were thinking about trying to really hit the youth movement. Again, trying to appeal to all ages, but we, we can really hit the youth movement. And he was definitely on board and said, I was hoping a team would step up and do this. When he understood kind of the thought process and the evolution and also the fact that we shared of we're the youngest team in baseball. We're not bound by tradition that limits our ability to evolve the uniform. He got it and he was on board right away. There's a lot of history, a lot of tradition in baseball. Um, you know, I think it's very difficult for some teams to, to take the step that we did. You know, I had worked at the Dodgers for years. I can't imagine us saying, let's bring in new designs and let's have treatment on the arms or on the back. You just can't do it when you have that much history. Eventually you may get there if, if 25 or 26 other teams have done it. But with us being a, a young franchise, it was easier for us to take that step. In April 2015, it was time to show the early renderings to the people whose opinions weighed heavily, the men who would wear them 162 times a year. They said Oregon football and, you know, they kind of wanted to be different, try different things that no one in the MLB has done. And so immediately I'm, you know, I'm thinking we're, we're going to wear clown suits and, <laughs> you know, and uh, but then they showed us them and I thought they were they were really classy. Since we all talked first stab, you think we uh, captured a lot of what we all yeah. talked about? Yeah, it was really good. Not yeah. overdone. This underarm one looks cool with the white and the red. Yeah. I like the underarm with the shoulder part yeah, as opposed right, yeah. to the yeah. stuff on the back. Yeah. I think the biggest thing was we didn't want to make them too crazy um, to go for like everybody's saying a softball look and that was something we were trying to stay away from but um, just give a little flair and a little color. I remember Brad Ziegler saying we need a color that definitely pops. You know we need a color do we go with a neon and we said well the problem is we won't be ready for this for another year and a half two years will neon still be popular? And we thought, we could do a combination of both. If we take our old teal, mm -hmm. which is a really hot color, make that one stand out as the pop color. The turning moment for us was when we first got it, uh, we were talking with the players and telling them what we were planning on and showing them comps and everything else. That excitement from the players got us even more excited. I like, I like this one the best. I like, I like those two other on the back. Though. This one I definitely like. I'm not, I'm not crazy about this, this one either. <laughs> To me, it was such an interactive process. It was remarkable. And I, I guarantee you, you can't think of too many or of any teams, institutions, universities, whatever, that went to their players and said, let's do it together. And, and, and handling it all in a house made that possible. From there, it was back to the drawing board. 
New mock-ups would be requested from Majestic, and two to three weeks later, a package would show up with new looks and new feedback to consider. Yeah. This right here feels a little... Yeah. Like, so we're going to do that more, <laughs> more like that material? I think it's one thing for you to see a mock-up or for you to see it hanging in a locker, but once they tried it on with the pants merging into the shoe and then people are saying, okay, now this makes sense. Now this is really looking good. And I feel like sometimes you wait to see what they're going to wear that day. Like whoever just said that about not having a set day where it's kind of like starting picture chooses or <laughs> whoever it is. Maybe, you know, it's planned out for a home stand, but maybe some people t tune in a little bit. Hey, I wonder what they're going to wear today. Goldschmidt is sort of the strong, silent type as a leader for our team. And, you know, just to hear him speak up when others weren't maybe really sure how to feel, it was nice to have his support as well. His message to us, you know, anytime you talk to him about the uniforms, he's like, they're great. But at the end of the day, we have to win. They'll look even better if we win. And I like that. I think sometimes we all believe, and it's true, you, the better you look, the better you're going to play. Some of the guys believe that. But uh, we're still going to have to pitch and hit and field and, and run the base as well to win games. So I think that's Paul's, Paul's caution, as it always is. He sort of he wants to make sure we understand playing the game is the most important thing. I, I don't think he would let this on, but he's he's got a very, very – strong attention to detail in terms of some of the design features and some of the looks. Around the pants, of the, it doesn't go all the way up. That's, that's new, right? But. I think he likes it more than he would let on. He's a little bit of a style guy. He's, he's well put together. He always dresses well when you see him out and about. And so I think he had definitely an idea in terms of how a baseball uniform could be constructed and some features that would make sense to incorporate. And, you know, he, he, a lot of smiles at a Goldie in the room. Well, Goldschmidt's buy-in was important to the process. He also helped out in an unexpected way. We did everybody with Goldschmidt just because he has a long name. I want to make sure all you guys are aware of that. So mm -hmm. sure could have done Could have done That was probably the best thing for me was, you know, I think I had some dreams at night of, of all those meetings and seeing, you know, nine Goldschmidts out there it would be a beautiful thing. Goldschmidt 44. Some of the players came in, they're wearing Goldie, they turned around and they said, we all want to be Goldie. You know, they were all saying that, we all want to be this guy. I mean, he's the guy, so, um, no, it was fine. I mean, everybody can be Goldie for a day. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. Some designs, try as they might, didn't make the cut. We looked at some really creative designs with the uniform. Could you go back to a pullover? Could you go back to a sleeveless uniform? We thought about pinstripes, trying to bring back pinstripes. They just didn't work with what we have here. Copper was an idea that we had. Metallic copper was part of the original uniforms back in 98 in the early days. It looked great by design. It looked great on the computer. It looked great on any paper that we printed. First time those uniforms came out and they, they went on bodies, we all went, hmm, something's missing. That copper just doesn't look good. No. no. What well, doesn't look good? The copper. color of the copper. It's very dull. This? It, it almost yeah. looks orange. It doesn't pop out at all. No. We quickly kind of got off the copper idea, transitioned back into snoring sand, and, and had some fun playing with those options. What do you like this? I think this is my favorite. Yeah, yeah this one or the black one. And then the white and gray one. teal one. I remember we were doing all these meetings and then we were going back and putting on our, our jerseys from the last couple of years and I'm, I love the jerseys we have, but it just seemed like so plain compared to what we're going with. On August 13, 2015, the team and the commissioner's office officially signed off on the uniform set. In a few months, the D-backs evolution will be the talk of baseball. The D-backs evolution includes eight uniforms. In the design, no square inch of the uniform is overlooked. Our uniform's actually constructed different than anyone else in baseball. So when you look at how we've used the pant, where we've got the trim starting about a third way down, you've got different seams that, that kind of have a design aesthetic, but also kind of a functional feature of them. The pattern, because it is something that was so new, we really wanted to get it right. We're the Diamondbacks, so we like the idea that the gradient is built using diamonds. We like the fact that the diamond insinuates a baseball field as well. We had some difficult decisions to make. You know, what, what cap should we wear in spring training? And we decided to go with the old Fang Ball. That was really a popular logo in the early years, and so giving it a little bit of an updated twist. On the surface, it looks like the logo that we've always used, but in reality, it's got a few little updates and tweaks to make it more in line with 2016 and not 1998. It's often said in a team sport that the name on the front of the jersey is more important than the name on the back. And in the D-backs case, that name on the front is brand new. It's the first time we've ever had a arced word mark on a uniform. So in the early years, we had an italicized either Arizona or Diamondbacks word mark, and then for the past nine seasons, having a little bit more of a, a straight boxed Arizona or D-backs on the uniform. Having a word mark that, that arcs the way that the new one does allowed us to reintroduce the front number, which we haven't had since 2002.
Perhaps the most celebrated aspect of the look is the return of a classic D-backs color. When I first heard about it, I'm like, ooh, how's that gonna look with the red and the black and the sand? And just seeing it, when they first brought the first jersey to us, we were all, it really was striking. I think it's really, really sharp. Those are gonna be ones people talk about. I love the cap, the A cap, that is our normal A cap, but the teal outline. It also happened to be a very popular color coming back into mainstream and pop culture. So the fact that we have history with the teal, we know it's also another color that's gonna be very popular in the years to come, was kind of a match made in heaven. One of the boldest moves in the new uniform comes from the road set, a shade of gray never before seen on a big league field. Yeah, it's different gray, it's more a darker gray, and I think it's gonna give it a different style, you know, different like impression for everybody. And this is clearly the darkest gray of any road uniform. Can you imagine, you know, kids in other ballparks where we're going to visit, going to see their home team and then looking down and seeing our uniform and say, Wow, I, I like that team. I want to follow that team. Or why aren't we wearing that? Every gray uniform just looks the same and pretty boring, I would say. So this would just bring something different to the game of baseball that it's never seen before. A darker, shinier gray uh, with different colors that we're bringing back. And that's something that I think everybody will, will really like. The patterned Diamondbacks caps are the most unique in baseball. In Buffalo, New York, baseball's official cap maker is in heavy production on the new D-backs lids. So when the Diamondbacks came to us uh, back in mid-2015, the summer, we started to work with them on some different aggressive designs that were trendy, not only in major league sports, but college sports. So working with the partners of Majestic, we were able to take their design elements that they wanted to do and put them to life. The 5950 cap is made up of six panels. In this part of the operation, we're going to lay out the panels and start sewing them together to give the overall structure of the cap. So at this point, as you can see, all six panels of the cap have been sewn together to form the crown of the cap. If I turn it inside out, you can start to see the cap forming. Now we're going to move on to the final stages to complete the cap. As you can see, the completed cap sublimation all around the crown is ready to ship out to the club. New Era will be working around the clock to get enough caps ready in time for spring training. But for now, the D-backs need just enough for their upcoming public unveiling. In the Sonoran Desert, the D-backs evolution is near. Chase Field, December 3rd, 2015. It's almost time for the D-backs evolution to go public. And amazingly, in the two-year process, there are no major leaks. Nah, it feels good, man. I don't know. I like it. I think we look pretty good. But we'll see. Hopefully the fans like it. This is going to be awkward. It's not at all. We all just practiced it. It really wasn't that weird. Yeah, let's it really wasn't that weird. Go out to the middle, stand there, count to one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three. Walk to the end, do the same thing, come back, and then stand there again, and Derek will say your name, and you go out that way. That way. With this change, we hope to appeal to fans of all ages, and in particular, to the younger audience that we've all been desperately trying to connect with, and I think we're going to do it. Are you ready? Let's do it. They've been waiting. And Gonzo, ladies and gentlemen, the evolution is here. Paul Goldschmidt, Chip Hale, David Peralta, Patrick Corbett, Daniel Hudson, Ruby De La Rosa, Josh Colmenter, AJ Polly, Tuffy Go Swift, Brandon Drury. Now we ask all of you to join the evolution. For the many, many people involved, after thousands of hours toiling away in secret, it's a moment to celebrate. This doesn't come across your desk every day. To have them all wearing the same uniform on opening day, running out to the third baseline to line up for the national anthem, those goosebumps they feel probably, that's what I'm going to be feeling. It's going to be really, really cool. And just, you know, every day when you flip on the television, that's a little bit of us. You know, as designers, we don't just make things look pretty. We're problem solvers. So a lot of the challenges, a lot of the feedback, a lot of that part of the process was exciting to sort of work through. To be the first team to, to have something so different in baseball that's been around forever is going to be something special next season and I think our team realizes that. Our team shop's been busy, 
Our photo shoots have turned out great. The players are excited about it. The new players coming into the organization have talked about it being an element of the decision-making process to come to the D-backs and around town, people are talking about it. The D-backs even found a way to impress the professor who studies evolution for a living. You know, baseball is an interesting sport and in how it's sort of an, a long-standing tradition in America with older generation fans on average. But we learned quickly that if you rely on that base, you're going to quickly go to extinction as a sport. And so you got to stay new and invigorating. And I, I really admire what the Diamondbacks have done. Nine is a good baseball number. Nine years in purple and teal, nine more in Sedona red and Sonoran sand. It's impossible not to wonder, what might the team wear in 2025? You're thinking after nine years of this, we're going to change again. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I hope I'm still managing, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what else we can do to spice it up. Our colorways, our logos, we're excited about. You know, I don't expect to see those change, but I do think that you'll see us kind of continue to push the envelope a little bit in terms of how a baseball uniform looks. But we also hope other teams follow our lead. That'd be a proud moment knowing that we've kind of helped evolve how baseball approaches uniforms in general. There's one thing you can count on. Whether they've started a trend across baseball or if they maintain their current reputation as a team that rewrites the rules, the D-backs evolution is here. The word evolution is so applicable here in so many different ways. There's the evolution of the uniforms, but really the evolution of the organization and probably more importantly, the evolution of that team on the field. I think we started to turn it last year and this is a big evolution with the uniforms. Uh, a lot of coaching changes. And then also going out there and, and getting some pieces that we feel like we need to, to be a championship caliber club. We like what we have going on as a team right now too. I think we've been building for in the last couple of years and, and we really feel like we got something special. And, um, and to have new jerseys and kind of a new look to go with it, I think it's pretty neat.